Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Roa no Azoro is one of the more loved characters in the story of One Piece, and as the right-hand man of the future King of the Pirates, his objective is always to keep any enemy from harming the crew, and is even offered to give up his life to save his companions several times. Along his journey, Zoro's acquired various scars on his body, which will mark him for the rest of his life making him remember the losses and victories he acquired throughout his journey as a straw hat. So in today's video, we're going to talk about all the visible scars that Zoro has on his body, how these events happen in which he ended up getting injured, and the location of these different scars. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that old YouTube algorithm, and it motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. Well, without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, Zoro's body is covered in scars from his various and multiple battles throughout his life although only a few of those battle scars are still visible on his body. Throughout our journey, Zoro has already faced off against several powerful enemies that have injured his body multiple times, causing small and even large scars on his body. But it's only the scars that are visible that tend to carry a much more important meaning. Among the scars that Zoro has all over his body, the one that stands out the most is the one that extends from his left shoulder to his right hip, and it was acquired during his defeat against the greatest swordsman in the world, Dracul Mihawk, while they were at Baratie. Early on in the Straw Hat's Adventure to become world-renowned as the Pirate King's crew. They ended up on the ship of Baratier, a restaurant full of amazing cooks, and Luffy stopped at this exact spot to find a cook for his own crew. When the Creek Pirates arrived on Baratier and started attacking everyone on the ship, Luffy managed to temporarily stop Don Creek until a short time later, when the greatest swords in the world appeared in the very same waters as Baratier. It turned out that Dracul Mihawk had been chasing Krieg for some time, and he arrives at the scene and cuts Krieg's ship into three parts, which left everyone present scared and impressed with the swordsman's skill. One of the Krieg pirates tried to shoot back at him with two flintlocks, but Mihawk deflected the bullets with his sword Yoru, easily managing to redirect projectiles into his desired direction. Upon realizing who was in front of him, Zoro was really excited to face off against the greatest swordsman in the world. This was Zoro's chance to try and achieve his own dream of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world, all so he could fulfill an old promise made to a friend. So Zoro challenged Mihawk to a duel. At the time, Mihawk didn't consider Zoro as someone capable of rivaling him, but accepted the duel nonetheless, saying that it would show him the difference in strength between them without using his strongest sword. So Mihawk placed Yoru back on his back while Zoro watched along. Then, the greatest swordsman in the world drew his Kogatana, a small blade that had been hidden in the cross of his necklace. This would be the weapon that he would use to duel the swordsman from the East Blue, telling Zoro that he didn't have a smaller sword to further diminish Zoro's strength in front of him. As Mihawk set himself into a fighting position, Zoro rushes forward to the greatest swordsman in the world in order to hit him with one of his three sword techniques. But as predicted, Mihawk easily blocked all three swords with that small Kogatana. After blocking Zoro's attack, Mihawk wondered what Zoro's purpose was what the motives were that led him to confront him. Zoro then unleashes a new attack, but Mihawk stabbed him in the chest before Zoro's swords could reach him. Mihawk then asked Zoro why he didn't back down, and Zoro replied that he wanted to fulfill an oath that he had made, so he'd rather lose his life than run away from a battle, even more so in this great combat in which he could see his goals actually come true. So out of respect for Zoro's defeat, Mihawk drew Yoru to end the battle. Zoro again charges towards Mihawk and performed his strongest attack, but Mihawk responded by breaking two of his swords and slashing him in the chest. Zoro turned to face Mihawk's next strike, avoiding the bigger swordsman slashing at his back. This move impressed Mihawk because Zoro stated that a wound in the back is disgrace to a swordsman. So Mihawk ended the duel by slashing him diagonally across the chest, holding back just enough that he didn't take Zoro's life. In that very one-sided duel, Mihawk still recognized the great determination and mastery of swords that Zoro had, and in that moment decided to wait for the day when Zoro would become strong enough to offer him a truly worthy duel. After the duel, Luffy pulls himself towards the Creek Pirate ship to angrily attack Mihawk, but Mihawk easily dodges his punch, and then told Luffy that he had not killed Zoro, and called on his defeated opponent to move on and meet him at the top so that one day Zoro could end up surpassing him. Mihawk then listened as Luffy shared his dream of becoming the Pirate King, and smiled as a barely conscious Zoro promises Luffy to never lose again. And he then told the two that he was looking forward to meeting them again, but at that moment, 
he was then confronted by a vengeful Don Krieg. However, Mihawk had no further interest in chasing Krieg's crew, so when Krieg attacked him, Mihawk dealt the ship a final blow and departed before chaos could ensue. So as we can see, this scar that Zoro carries is one of the hardest and most determined promises that Zoro has ever made in his life, to never lose again until he becomes the greatest swordsman in the world. Another set of visible scars that are inflicted on Zoro are on his ankles and came from a desperate attempt to break free from Mr. Three while trying to cut his feet in Little Garden. During their adventure, Zoro and the Straw Hats ended up on the island of Little Garden a prehistoric island inhabited by dinosaurs and giants. Zoro had been ordered by Sanji to collect some food and challenge him to a competition over who would be able to bring back the biggest piece of meat. However, what the Straw Hats did not suspect was that a Baroque's work agent was on their trail, where they easily managed to defeat both the giants that were on the island. And not only that, Mr. Three also managed to imprison Zoro, Nami, Vivi, and Brogi in a wax structure that he made with the power of his devil fruit. Mr. Three advanced the wax covering their body little by little, to the point where he might have been able to suffocate them, offering them a slow death leaving them unable to take any further action. As the danger rose, Brogi said the only way to honorably lose their life was to give his all in those final moments. And Zoro agreed and tried to do a risky and completely crazy action. Zoro tried to take his sword and cut his feet off in an attempt to escape the wax that was slowly covering their body being created by Mr. Three. But thankfully, Luffy arrived on the scene, so Zoro left the rest to him. But as Luffy tried to rescue his friends, this only accelerated the deadly waxing process, prompting Zoro to strike an honorable pose, so should he lose his life being covered in wax, at least he'd look good. And then, to make matters worse, Miss Golden Week interfered and revealed her own terrifying ability. Usopp ends up freeing Luffy from Miss Golden Week's control by burning Luffy's shirt, and then with Karu's help, Usopp and Luffy rescued Zoro, Vivi, and Nami. Next, the newly freed crew managed to defeat Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, while Luffy and Karu chased Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week in the forest. But unfortunately, Zoro was unable to save Usopp from Mr. Five. Following all the events on Little Guard, the crew then left being propelled by the Island Eater and departed for Alabasta in search of freeing the country from the great enemy called Sir Crocodile. So again, we see Zoro gets a scar during a decisive combat, but this time it was himself that caused the scar so he could escape and try and save his companions. Finally, the last visible scar that we'll discuss in this video that Zoro has was acquired during the time skip, and of course the scar we're talking about is the one that goes over his left eye. A scar that Zoro gained during his training with Miha, but yet we still don't know how and when this scar was earned. There have been many ideas in the community that Mihawk himself may have been responsible for making this scar, since he was training with the greatest swordsman in the world. But the cut is quite small, and Mihawk would have had to use his Kokatana in order for Zoro to earn that scar. And with all the mystery surrounding this scar behind it, it's probably just something that's just meant to be visual, making Zoro seem cooler or more menacing in his appearance, a look much more worthy of a true pirate. Throughout their journey, Zoro has probably also received other injuries that it could have easily formed scars, although they may not have been shown because they didn't necessarily pertain to a very important meaning in the story. For instance, during his fight against Mr. One, Zoro received several slashing blows to his body, which could have easily made scars all over there, scars which would carry great significance. Because in this battle, Zoro says that if something as common as a wound takes a man's life, that man lived a common life. And that was something that Zoro just couldn't have. In this battle, Zoro ended up overcoming his limits at the time, becoming so much stronger and gained the ability to cut through steel, something that he was unable to do before that fight. So those injuries that Zoro sustained from Mr. One could have indeed become a scar, becoming something memorable, although Oda just maybe preferred not to show it as a scar. Zoro even received several blows from King during their battle on Wano, which could easily become new scars on his body, but we just haven't seen those materialize either. So as we can see, throughout the many battles that Zoro has fought, he's acquired different injuries, and some have become scars where others have not. Now, although some of these injuries may not have ever resolved into a scar, we know that these have always been events that have helped Zoro evolve and become stronger and stronger, not just so he can achieve his dream to become the greatest swordsman in the world, but so that he always has the strength to protect his friends and his crewmates from any danger that he's able to save them from. But with all that said, my friends, we'd now love to know what you think about it. With that scar over Zoro's eye, do you think it's just a visual 
visual appeal, kind of make him look tougher kind of scar? Or do you, like others in the community, think that there might be some hidden gem or power underneath that eye? I've heard many different ideas out there about perhaps that's where Ashra, the demon that lives inside of Zoro, resides. Or do you think it's just like Oda said, to make him look tougher? Also, are there any other characters you'd love to see us do a breakdown like this for? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So as we wrap up today's video, we'd like to thank you so much for watching our video, especially those of you who've stayed with us here to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in our next video. Let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.